In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to apply a below knee back slap. With a below knee back slap, you can control distal uh, tibial and fibular fractures, which are ankle fractures. You can control metatarsal fractures and you can control less flank injuries. Now, it's important that we have the foot at 90 degrees so that we don't develop an inclined contracture within the plaster back slab. Because the gastrocnemius muscle arises from the back of the, the femoral condyles and goes down to the heel, if the knee is out straight, the gastrocnemius will be tight and the foot will necessarily be in plantar flexion. So we want to get the knee bent so that it allows us to dorsiflex the ankle and we can get that into a neutral position. So in order to do that with armour here, what I'm going to do I'm going to lift up his knee, I'm going to keep the knee bent. Right. And I've got all my materials here ready. So I've got a stockinette, which is the comfort layer, which is going to go next to the skin. I've got some wool, uh, which is going to protect the skin from foot plaster. And I've got some plaster slabs. Now I'm going to use quite a wide 20 centimetre slab because these injuries are generally twisting injuries and we don't want to have a slab which covers one surface we want to have a slab which covers three surfaces so that it prevents any rotation but we want to leave an area which is uncovered so that if there's any swelling we don't uh, cause compartment syndrome by making it too tight and not leaving any room for swelling so i'm going to um, first of all measure out with the stocking neck and we need to measure from the fibula head one handstand, two handstand, about three. I need to measure four on the stocking neck because this tends to become shorter as it's stretched sideways. And it's better to have something that's too long than too short. This is one way of doing it with a patient in a supine position. So if you have uh, sedated your patient in order to manipulate the ankle, then this is how you do it. But if you are not sedating your patient and you're just applying the back slab, then there are other ways which are probably more convenient. And I'll show you that later. So now we've got our stocking out. Because there's an injury, I don't want to drag this on, I want to unroll it. And I'm going to go all the way down to the metatarsal heads down here. So I'm going to unroll this around the foot. All the way up the leg. This just about reaches the knee. And I want the foot to be at 90 degrees. Now this can cause some rippling of the uh, stocking net. What we'll do is just fold that over so that there's no um, fold around the skin. Next I'm going to apply the wool. And I want the wool to go down to the metatarsal heads. I want two complete layers to protect the skin from the plaster. And I need to wrap it around. And I might want to cover the bony provinces with some plaster felt or with a piece of gauze. And overlapping 50% every time. I haven't quite got two complete layers there, so I'm going to apply a little bit more at the proximal end. Off. Now I want to measure out the length of my back slab, so that's about right. I'm going to create six layers of that. Three, four, nine, six layers out of that. So 
So that's five. And six. And then I'm going to create a new slab as well. A new slab I'm going to use a six inch slab. And that's just going to go around the ankle like that because the weak point in this plaster is always going to be the ankle. So I'm going to reinforce that with my six inch. So it's one, two, three, Six layers there. Now I've got some water. Just to above room temperature but not too hot because this is an exothermic reaction and I don't want uh, the tin to burn it. I might want to protect the malleoli like the lateral malleolus and the edgemires by putting some gauze on just to give a bit of extra padding around there. And what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to put on my um, stirrup first and the reason is that if I try and apply the back slab to the back of the leg it's just going to fall off with gravity but the stirrup should stay on. Now I'm going to get wet make sure it's nice and soaked and squeeze off the excess water and that's going to go underneath the foot and around the sides I don't want them to meet at the front because then that would be a complete plaster and there'd be a risk of compartment syndrome if there was any swelling. So that's now applied using my palms in order to um, smooth this out. And then I'm going to apply my main slab. I'm going to make some little incisions at the side to allow it to fold at the level of the ankle. I'm now going to dip this in. So once I've got all stopped, squeeze out the excess fluid. And I'm going to apply this starting at the metatarsal head because that's the difficult place. And Hopefully my stirrup is going to allow this to stick down so that it doesn't fall off, but it very often does. Again, I'm going to use my palms to try to smooth this on, join it onto the stirrup. And then I can fold down. In the stocking out so it exposes the metatarsal heads and I need to fold down at the top layer as well. Then I can take my crate bandage and start at the bottom end to wrap this around. And it would be a good idea to use quite cool water because you need more time to apply the plaster and also to get the right position. And I can use a little bit of spare plaster. To act like glue. And that will hold the end of the quick bandage in place. Now, I want the foot to be at 90 degrees, so I've got the knee bent, and I'm going to have use my uh, abdomen in order to keep the foot at 90, at 90 degrees to the leg. And also, if it's an ankle fracture, I also want a little bit of internal rotation of the ankle joint. So, um, if you hold your knee, stop, you stop the knee from being able to rotate, I'm just going to internally rotate the ankle slightly, and that will... Um, keep the ankle reduced 
because the vast majority of these injuries are external rotation injuries. So in order to keep it reduced, you need to apply internal rotation. I'm using the palms of my hands to grip the hind foot and the ankle so that I don't cause any indentations. If you use your fingers, then you can uh, cause indentations which can cause pressure sore. And then my plaster hasn't quite set, but when it has, I'm going to check for capillary refill. Can you feel me touching you there? And there, and there, and there, and no pins and needles. Okay. And then after it's set, I'm going to send him back for another x ray to make sure that I haven't made the position any worse and that there's no risk to the skin underneath from a subluxed ankle. And the foot is nicely at 90 degrees. So this time we're going to apply a blow in the back slab, but if you don't have much in the way of help or your patient has been sedated, then it's far easier to apply the back slab with the patient prone. So armour is now lying face down. I'm going to assume that he's got a broken ankle and we're going to apply our uh, plaster back slab. Now, previously when the patient was supine, putting the back slab on first meant that it was like to fall off with gravity. Now, gravity is our friend, so it's going to help us. So I can apply my back slab on first of all. I'm going to dip this in water. Squeeze out the excess fluid. Stretch it out. Using the palm of my hands to put it on. And we want to make sure that the big toe is free and we also want to make sure that the little toe is free as well. So quite happy with that position. And then I can put on my new slab. Again, you don't want the water to be too hot because then the plaster will set too quickly and you may need to put your foot to 90 degrees. I need to apply that in the back. So I've now got a plaster which is going three quarters of the way down the leg, which is better um, for controlling the twisting injuries. I'm just going to fold that in and then I can fold back. Make sure that I can see the little toe and the big toe, and then I can wrap up with a crepe bandage. I'm going to soak my crepe bandage and then I'm going to apply it. This is going to stop the plaster from falling off the leg, and I can then bend the knee so that gastrocnemius is relaxed and I'm using my abdomen to control the ankle so it's at 90 degrees and because these are generally external rotation injuries what I'm going to do is um, use the Position. I'm going to slightly internally rotate his ankle, folding the malleoli, internally rotating the ankle, and if it's an external rotation injury, then this should help keep it in a position of reduction without any tailor shift. After your plaster has been applied, you need to perform routine checks, including a check x-ray to make sure the position is satisfactory.